How's it going YouTube? It's Panda Time. In this video we have myself playing Fallen Angels going up against Imperial. So you know Imperial Master is a classic battle of starter decks. Uh, but Fallen Angels is not quite the standard Mastermon deck, it is pretty different. I do have the deck profile for it up in the channel, if you guys are interested definitely do check it out. We're going to be starting with a double rookie from both sides and a pancake boost to pick up some pieces. Uh, looks like a bit of a rookie rush strategy here, just slamming down some Lavermons. Definitely not the ideal start for her. Uh, there is a little bit of glare on the side of the Imperial, but I think it is a pretty solid match, so I definitely did want to showcase it. We're going to go straight into Gato and Drew 1x to give one secure attack minus one, and then go into Ofani, popping the other Lavermon and getting the heal. So off the bat, a very strong start, I would say. It's going to swing into a flame hell side, so things going from bad to worse. At least there is nothing in my security that can, or in my trash that I can bring back from the hell side, uh, but obviously still a pretty good start for us. You can see how the early Gato into the cheap resolution straight into Ofani could do so much work. Gonna be hard dropping down a fighter mode, definitely a bit of a brick hand. Are right, we gonna see if we have a way to answer it? We might not, but without its sources, the fighter mode just cannot actually do that much. We're gonna be playing some pulse mons to just cycle through our hand, find some pieces, go a bit wide. Definitely gonna at least swing over the B man, and then finally, we do have the chaos degradation to answer the fighter mode. Gonna send it to the bottom, trash the top, just in case there might be like a hammer spark or something else like that. Blue Memorus is gonna pick up some pieces. Looks like after you know hard playing other rookies, she was low on them. Was able to at least pick up another Beamon and get started, but still doesn't really have the hand that she wants, I think. Uh, we're just kind of going a bit wide on the rookies here. Mega Death against the Fani would be very strong, but without a green source, it's not actually available. Gonna just hard drop a Peldramon. Uh, yeah, definitely a less than ideal game one, we'll say. So Fani is going to swing, it's only one check, but now we could just are free to chip at the security. Do swing into a Davis and Kendo, which is kind of scary since there is the blue and green already. Going to keep on swinging. Hard drop in Andrew 1. Looks like we don't even have a good follow up, definitely lacking level 4 there. Any sort of Gato 1 would have gone a long way for sure. So Peldermon can swing twice. Uh, he does not have jamming though, usually when that guy swings, you expect him to be a jammer. Can at least like swing over the pulse one and restand. There are some plays. There is the extra memory from Davis and Ken, uh, but she's definitely still in a bad position to say the least. A Mega Death against Ofani is the best answer for sure. Otherwise, the illusion is just too much. Gonna be trading rookies there, and then I guess deciding what to do with Peldramon. We were able to heal up, you know, with the Afani. Got to play a Davis to get even more searches. So even after all that, you know, still does not have the pieces that she needs, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. We're doing a good job of pressuring with the Afani and additional bodies. Gonna swing at security, but like I said, no jamming means that Peldramon is out of there. At this point, she doesn't really have anything left on the board. We have a bunch of memory, or you know, a bunch of bodies to work with. Uh, Mega Death again is really the only answer here, and it is gonna be. Mega Death to bounce the Ofani, does give us 5 memory to work with, with 5 memory we can swing at security, swing at security, and then play Bushi Agumon for game. Uh, so a bit of an awkward game one, uh, but you know, you have to make the best of whatever hand is given to you, that's Digimon right, that's card games in general. Uh, I respect the hard drop, the fighter mode play, and we're able to use our post monster dig for chaos integration. We're gonna go rookie into Gato, which is a pretty solid start, definitely cannot complain about that early EXP in the other side. I feel like when I look back on the Imperial, you know, dominance back in the day, I feel like Imperial is such a strong deck when you open the EXP, it's a huge part of how powerful the deck is. So fantastic start as well. There's the blue memory boost, which could pick up something. We're gonna see what she's missing. You know, can opt to pick up either of the level sixes. The fighter mode did not get to shine last game. Maybe this time it will. And then a Davis to pick up a B-Man just in case. So we do have a Gato, but looks like we're whiffing a level 5s. Play a Mako that's gonna whiff on everything, that's just sad panda time. And then we did want to make him on. Uh, so obviously we don't have a level 5 there, if we have any level 5, we instantly go into a level 5 to get value out of the Gato. Uh, but that's Gato, you know, play, search, whiff, Mako, play, whiff as well. And again, that is just Digimon, right? Sometimes you just don't get the pieces that you need. 
maybe the Gato can stick around, uh, but a Peldramon could definitely just easily answer him, so it's kind of scary. I think the idea is that we set up two level four so that if we do eventually draw level five, we can at least have something to work with. I'm gonna be playing the Beamon to get the Surge. Looks like doesn't quite have the full Stingmon Peldramon combo. Uh, so it might still be okay for us, gonna just be another Davis. Davis is gonna finally pick up this Stingmon. Gives us quite a bit of memory to work with. You know, but it got on the board for memory, and Mako set. If we have a level five here, we could just make amazing plays for sure, right? Like being able to swing over the XB, for example, and then potentially just go over the beam on. We're gonna actually just, yeah, go into the Andrew one, punch it, and then Ofani to clear the beam on and get the recovery. Uh, pretty good. I think the idea here is that we're going to be passing over memory no matter what. So in this case, we can utilize the stack with the Meku and then still keep the Gato for when we draw another level 5. At least that's the thought process. The Mastermon, I mean the Ofanimon is pretty good there, doing a good job of clearing. And we can now use it to pressure her security. So I'd say we're in a pretty good spot. Going to be setting up for a future turn with the Stingmon in the back. Has double Davis, make that 3 Davis, 1 Ken, what are they doing? Uh, we don't have a rookie, but we're going to start swinging at security for pressure. It is going to be Megadeth first check. Uh, so that's a bit of a small misplay there, you know. The Megadeth has two effects. So in the first effect, you can suspend my Gato and then use the second effect to bounce the Ofanimon. Uh, so just a small thing, but you know, just be aware of your cards. It just makes a big difference potentially, right? Like this Andrew one could be suspended and it could easily be dealt with. We're going to just set up our Tamer to pass. We're clearly struggling trying to find our pieces. You know, no rookie, kind of struggling for good plays. And the Mega Death hurts so much there, because, you know, that would have been two checks. And we'd really like the Yofani to get deleted so we can use her effect. Gonna be Digivolving into a Lobomon. That's the Stingmon on the other side. Can go for the full Jogress play into the Peldramon as expected. Not gonna be swinging first, you know, no jamming. Does not want to take any sort of unnecessary risk. I think it's a good idea. We also know she has the Fighter Mode, so can easily go into the Fighter Mode and balance the Andrew 1X, which is pretty good. And looks like that's gonna be the play. Can opt to swing with Peldramon first, but again, no jamming, right? So being very, very safe here. Fighter mode is free to swing, swing for days. It's not gonna die to anything in security. You know, can get some damage. And now one Mega Death and one Fighter mode later, and our board has been fully answered. We still don't have a rookie to work with, so we're kind of just struggling here. Finally, can use a Pancake Boost to pick up a Panamon. But at this point, you gotta wonder, you know, is it too little, too late? We only have three security, she's got so many tamers, and based on the rush gato in the back, we very clearly do not have the pieces that we need. At this point, uh, in a game like this, we would just need our security to sort of bail us out. Uh, and looks like that's not happening here, the gatos are stuck in security, never to see the light of day. Gonna go XP in the back. I think the idea is that if she can win the game this turn, just set it up so the next turn will be game for sure. Uh, which is a pretty solid game plan. We do have Memory Fixer and Memory Boost, but I think we're just a little bit too behind to work with. The Madoki, you know, might do some work to stop the Pancake Boost, so a pretty solid play for sure. And I'm gonna just set up a Memory Boost to pass turn to ensure that she has all the memory she needs to close out the game on the following turn. So we can Digimon to the Andromon to give the Fighter Mod Secure Attack minus. Andrew 1x can then recover one, give him secure attack minus one again. We get to heal from the uh, Andrew 1x and get one memory. The memory doesn't get stopped by the Madoki because you know it's a tamer. Then we're going to find it to pop the Madoki and stabilize. I'd say not bad. We have a funny setup with the Andrew 1 to summon rookies for free. We negate the fighter mode by at least giving Scare Attack minus 3. Uh, he's still free to swing, suspend, and then swing over the uh, Fanimon. But because of the Rush Gato, we actually have Retaliation in the stack. Uh, which is pretty good, so that's, that's the idea there. Definitely a great turn and a good way to potentially stabilize there. I'd say that we're still not in a great spot, especially because she has so much memory to work with. And this turn we could potentially either die to just the rest of the board, or just have this Afani get answered by a Mega Death. In which case we would also lose the game anyway. There's gonna be the Peldramon. This time around he's gonna have jam and he's free to swing, restand. We're still hoping for just anything in security. Uh, but looks like there's not gonna be anything to say with this game. Just another Gato, that was three Gatos in my security, kinda sad. And then Imperial with the restand from the Dual Tamer. That's gonna be the game. So a bit of an awkward game, but you know, 
again pretty exciting stuff we're moving into game three here gonna once again start off with the xb which is pretty powerful we have the young bushy agumon in the back uh tell me guys how come there is a bushy agumon but there is no bushy gabumon can anybody answer that riddle for me we're gonna digivolve gato in the back i think the idea there is that if we just hard drop the gato it just gets cleaned up too easily by a Peldramon. So we have to take the safe play. Can we drop in a Beamon for some searches? We're able to protect our Gato and hopefully we still have the right line. We have the Andromon for one, which can then punch over. And then once again, we go into the Ofani to pop the rest of the board. You see me go into this place consistently this whole game. And like that really is what this whole deck is based around, right? It's such a powerful play. Uh, we didn't even have the Andromon X this time around, but of course when you do have that, it's just even better. Gonna be hard dropping this thing, Mon. You know, in preparation for Jogger's plays next turn. It's kind of risky because, like, that thing could just get cleaned up by, like, a Flame Hellside, for example. Gonna be swinging, getting card draw of the QP Mon. The Ofani is kind of just chilling. But I guess if we don't have a Flame Hellside, we don't have a way to answer this thing, Mon, right? So, might still just be the correct play. Gonna go into the Mako in the back, trying to find some pieces. Just set up an Andrew Mon. Uh, maybe the idea here is that if our Ofani gets bounced, we can just instantly go into another one, right? XP is gonna swing. He is a jammer. Does have the Peldramon. Still has a ton of memory to work with as well, right? Peldramon can swing, get the memory, get the jam, get the restand. Does swing into a pancake boost, so at least this time there is something in our security that might help out. Gonna be swinging again, it looks like, into a memory tamer, so... You know, that is one of the risks of, you know, swinging aggressively of course you have to swing to win the game but there's always the risk gonna go into the dragon to spit out both the level fours with the full stack and go into another peldramon this one is free to swing twice again with the jam swinging through nothing else in security except the tamer so a pretty good turn doing you know as much damage as possible gonna set up a davis to pass turn putting me at zero security with two bodies on the board and Davis for a potential hybrid lethal. So a pretty strong turn. That set though, we have four memory to work with, a memory boost, two Kari's, I still have Anafana in the board and we have two stacks. So, you know, she had a fantastic turn. And the question is, how well can we answer? Like, how good is our clapback? And I guess we're about to find out, right? So I think the idea here is like, first of all, we need to make sure we clear the board. And secondly, after we clear the board, we make sure that we at least can heal so that we don't just die to a simple hybrid. Uh, from then on, we should be able to ideally control the board state and win the game that way, right? Uh, but obviously it's easier said than done, so let's figure out how we're gonna do this. So it's gonna be a Mastermon first, so we don't trash, which is nice. We get to summon the Young Candlemon, use the Ophani to swing over, using the effect of the Andromon to play a Patamon, which will then recover one, trigger both of them to heal and give us extra memory. The Afanimon is gonna die, but that's okay because Afanimon being deleted just means we get a Gatomon back. The Gatomon can then pick up some pieces. Looks like the choice here is do we want the hybrid for game potential or do we want the Gatomon for the block recovery? And the idea here is that we want some extra safety, so we're taking the Gatomon. After that, we're able to just swing over the Peldramon and then we're in a pretty good spot. We can hard drop the Gatomon on play. We have less than three security, so we're able to recover one. And it puts us in a pretty solid spot. Now we went from having, you know, no security to now we have a blocker and to security. She's gonna go into a low one swing, uh, but does not realize that the Gatomon is actually a blocker. So it's actually gonna take that attack back. And this is like a pretty, you know, just chill local. So like stuff like that is okay. She just wasn't aware. I will say like, be careful like in a big tournament, right? If you're like, oh, I declare my attack. Like you can ask your opponent, right? Like, do you have any blockers, right? Like. If you just assume that they don't and they do, then like that's a misplay on your part, right? But obviously in a case like this, it's totally okay. Gonna try and stay alive, going into a Dino B to stun the Mastamon, and then Fighter Mode to return something. Uh, definitely a good answer. You know, Fighter Mode's pretty scary, you can swing twice, still has a Labram on the back. And because the Mastamon is stunned, we potentially don't have game this turn. So, doing the best that she can from a bad situation. I think our clapback was pretty good though. We're still able to save our pancake boost and we still have, you know, a ton of stuff to work with. At this point, we need to still be a little bit careful. We need to make sure that I don't just lose the game to security or shenanigans, right? So it's gonna be Gato for three, going into the Android one for one. 
Injure one X for zero to give the fighter security attack minus. That's gonna give me a bunch of memory from the Karis. And by neutralizing the fighter mode, we can ensure that we are probably, you know, not gonna be losing the game next turn. So at this point, it's just to make sure that, like, how can we set up a board where we just win next turn no matter what, right? That's gonna be popping the pancake boost, going to Afani for an additional heal on top of that. Gonna be swinging at security. It is gonna be an ice wall, which is gonna pass turn. Uh, but I'm okay with this, right? Like, if the ice wall isn't there, we would naturally just win the game on the spot with the two of the bodies. And a hammer spark or ice wall passes her to one memory, which means that she doesn't have a lot to work with. We're able to heal all the way up to four security. We still have the Mastamon, still have the Alphanimon, two bodies on the board, and a candle on the back. So at this point, it's just, you know, the board control is too strong. And it's board control where we're like controlling the board through our Digimon, which is how I enjoy playing the game, right? Uh, so I'd say we're in a pretty good spot. The fighter mode cannot swing at security, or it can do any damage, but it can't swing and proc its effects. So it can at least, you know, swing and try to clear stuff, clear stuff up. She can swing and suspend the god so that I can't block, for example. Uh, gonna choose to swing at the Mastamon. Looks like not using the other effect to suspend anything else. Again, maybe slight misplay, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, we choose not to block, because at this point we just want bodies to close the game out with, I think. The Afani gets swung over, and on deletion we're gonna get the Gatamon back to get another Afanimon from the deck. At this point she can maybe, again, try and Mega Death a body, but with the Rookie in the back it's just too much. And only one memory means that she doesn't have enough to work with. She's very close to lethal, you know, putting us at zero security. Uh, but again, the, the Panamon and the Andromon X did a lot of work there. Lavramon on the other side is just not doing too much, sadly. Thinking about how to potentially end the turn, if there's anything that could save her, you know, it might just come down to good security. But at this point, she's in a, she, she's in a situation where, like, even a Mega Death or a Hammer Spark is not going to be enough, right? She's going to Mega Death the Gato just in case, uh, but we're free to just swing and then swing for game. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Thank you guys so much for watching.